This is Avanish Sabaya, and I have contributed to the drone video project in its research solution design and the research paper. The drone video project aims to create a competition that tests competitor solutions on their ability for person segmentation and re-identification. This is because of a larger problem of the development and implementation of autonomous drones. Autonomous drones are being implemented in the shipping, logistics, and healthcare fields. Companies such as Amazon are testing the use of prime air autonomous delivery drones in rural areas. An example of one such drone can be seen in the photo to the right. Warehouses are also looking into drones for tra transporting wares within complexes. And lastly, drones are being tested to perform emergency services by providing defibrillators or AEDs to those in need. A common thread with these implementations is that they all require the use of autonomous drones in order to be feasible cost and efficiency wise, which raises the concern of safety. As such, such implementations of fully autonomous drones are currently prohibited by the FAA in the US. In order to resolve these concerns, machine learning technology must advance in its ability to recognize and segment people while running on low power chipsets embedded in drones. Datasets, however, that include consenting participants from a drone video perspective are rather scarce in the field. As such, the Drone Video Project aims to create this competition to promote the development of low-power person segmentation and re-identification. Over the course of the semester, I've contributed to the Drone Video Project in research into related papers, solution design and development, and in writing the research paper itself. My research into related works has been to generate evaluation metrics for segmentation, consideration for annotations of person re-identification, and considerations for the semi-autonomous video annotation. In order to find potential metrics for testing segmentation that we could implement in our competition, I researched into papers about developing and evaluating their datasets. To that end, I found this paper, a benchmark dataset and evaluation method methodology for video object segmentation. This paper concerns itself with developing a dataset of high quality videos taken of a single object in the foreground. As you can see in the upper photo, the videos have a relatively fixed angle on a single moving object. The more useful part of this paper for our drone video project was its later section on the evaluation methodology the researchers had developed for use on neural networks tested against their dataset. This evaluation methodology based around video segmentation considered region similarity contour accuracy, and temporal stability. Region similarity is important for checking if the neural network is consistently and accurately localizing the object in the foreground. Contour accuracy evaluates the error in the shape of the generated annotations of the neural network against the ground truth to see if neural networks are accurately segmenting the shape of the object. And lastly, temporal stability was tested against to examine if the video annotations are staying relatively stable over the course of the video. These three performance metrics were combined into scores of contour accuracy versus region similarity and contour accuracy versus temporal stability. You can see this on the graphs to the bottom left and to the right, respectively. As such, from this paper, contour accuracy, temporal stability, and region similarity were important considerations for developing the performance metrics for the competition. When our project began investigating re-identification, and our annotation format for re-identification in our dataset, I began researching other papers on person re-identification and annotation. These papers brought valuable considerations into how our annotations for re-identifications should be structured. The first paper, Person Re-identification by Local Maximal Occurrence Representation and Metric Learning, was based around creating an effective solution to re-identifying people from CCTV cameras. They came to an issue that person re-identification was inconsistent due to changing angles as different features of a, of a person such as the face, arms, front or back torso could become obscured by changing angles. This is a problem I recognize we will encounter to a greater intensity as our drone will capture video at a wide variety of constantly shifting angles. Their solution was to group the horizontal features of people by horizontal cross sections. You can see an example of this horizontal grouping of features in the picture to the right, which shows the horizontal grouping of features in the red, green, and blue boxes. According to the paper, a horizontal grouping of features made the algorithm used for re-identification more resistant to changes in perspective. 
This gave insight into how we could annotate features of people in our testing dataset by horizontal cross-sections to test competitor neural networks on their resistance to changing viewpoints. The second paper, Correlative Multi-Video Annotation, gave insights into how annotations of context and the objects themselves must be implemented in the same step. The paper investigated two methods of implementing context into annotations of video, with one being a two-step process and the second being a single step, where context and the object is determined at the same time. They found that the two-step implementation was greatly reduced in accuracy by error propagation between the steps, whereas the accuracy was greatly improved by the single-step implementation of context annotations. Earlier, our team had investigated the role of context annotations for segmentation from the paper, context encoding for segmentic segmentation. Thus, this paper brings considerations into the importance of implementing annotations of context and, and the subject in the same step. Earlier in our drone video project, before our collaboration with the crowdsourcing team, developing a method of semi-autonomous video annotation was a critical goal for making the annotation workload for each video in the dataset more manageable. To this end, I found a paper, Video Analysis and Trajectory-Based Video and Annotation System, or VADIS, to provide a good example of how to create a, such a semi-autonomous video annotation system. The paper focuses on the creation of VADIS. For this, they developed algorithms for global motion estimation, motion prediction, and object tracking. The first algorithm on global motion estimation was more relevant to our project as it dealt with cameras that captured videos at changing angles which would be the main feature of our dataset, being a drone video dataset. As you can see to the picture at the right, their global motion estimation system was created to reduce error in finding the motion of the foreground object due to global motion. As you can see in image C, there is a great deal of noise created by global motion that is reduced by the compensation from the global motion estimation system when you look at image D. As such, this paper was useful at the time for considerations into the development of a semi-autonomous video annotation system that would have to work with footage collected from moving drones, though this contribution is less relevant after the collaboration of the drone video team with the crowdsourcing team. Throughout the semester, I have also contributed to the design and development of our testing dataset and the competition. Through contributions through design considerations, sequence designs, performance metrics, CVAT pro prototype annotations, competition questions, and participating in prototype drone video footage. For our development of sequences for choreographing our drone video testing dataset, I provided design considerations for the sequences and blueprint designs of sequence six and sequence nine. In terms of design considerations, I explained the importance of ensuring a variety of lighting and weather conditions when developing a dataset within the reasonable operating parameters of a drone. This is to ensure that our dataset is not too specific to any particular time of year or day or weather condition. For the development of sequences, I developed sequence nine and six. These sequences were moderately difficult sequences that required the proposed re-identification algorithm to be capable of both multi-person re-identification and re-identification through occlusion from a moving angle. Sequence six, as shown by the picture to the bottom left, tests on multi-person re-identification with a drone moving forwards throughout the sequence. Sequence nine, as shown by the picture to the bottom right, tests re-identification from person occlusion as the paths of the various participants intersect while the drone moves forward throughout the video. Our team aims to use this testing dataset to create a competition that will evaluate person re-identification and segmentation solutions from competitors. To this end, I propose competition metrics for performance evaluation and competition questions for competitor solution scoring. Two of the competition metrics I proposed on the Performance Metrics Confluence page are contour accuracy and a similarity index. Contour accuracy is a metric for segmentation that was initially brought to my attention by the aforementioned paper, a benchmark dataset and evaluation methodology for video object segmentation and it will ensure that our competition evaluates the accuracy of, of the shapes of generated annotations for person segmentation. I also propose the similarity index based on findings from the paper, person re-identification by support vector ranking, 
which found that redefining the re-identification problem as a ranking or similarity problem instead of a correct incorrect re-identification problem actually increased accuracy greatly. As such, I believe that the re-identification score calculated on a neural network should be partially determined by the error or distance between ground truth feature vectors of the people classified by the algorithm as the same person. Our team also needs, to que needs questions to score competitors themselves on. To this end, I believe that solutions provided by competitors should be fully capable of simultaneously re-identifying people because real-world applications of these algorithms on autonomous drones would need to handle many people in, in view leaving and entering view at once. As such, I proposed, a comp I proposed a competition question that asks how many people do more than one person re-enter at the same time defined by a section of plus or minus 15 frames. Answering this question would necessitate that the competitor solution must be capable of handling re-identification of multiple people within the span of 15 frames. Later in the project, we began developing prototype drone video footage. I contributed to the development of prototype drone video footage by being one of the participants required for the choreographed sequences. As you can see in this frame, I am person 5 in this example. Following this is an example section of prototype drone video footage. After the prototype drone footage was collected, I created some prototype proof of concept video annotations using the tool CVAT. CVAT, or Computer Vision Annotation Tool, is an open source computer vision annotation tool that can be found on GitHub. The link for CVAT can be found below on the slide. The annotations were bounding boxes around the various persons in the sequence that specified the number of the person as a variable in order to assign each person a unique number for identification purposes. While this work is no longer relevant for development purposes after the collaboration between the drone video and the crowdsourcing team, it still serves as a useful proof of concept annotated frame to use as consideration for when developing further sequences and videos for the drone video dataset. Following this is an example video of CVAT video annotations done on one person. Lastly, throughout the semester, I made contributions to the team's research paper. More specifically, I contributed to the related works, bibliography, introduction, and method drafts. To the related works section of our research paper, I added the highlighted sections in the image to the right. In these sections, I added the related works to the left mentioned earlier in this presentation. For the bibliography section of our research paper, I added the references to, to the sources used in related works and the introduction drafts listed to the left to the bibliography. The section I added is screenshotted in the image to the right. For the introduction draft, I focused on adding a larger context for the purpose of our dataset with regard to the application of autonomous drones, while also including the papers Unmanned Aerial Vehicles Drones in Out of Hospital, hospital Cardiac Arrest and Delivery by Drone, an evaluation of unmanned aerial vehicle technology in reducing CO2 emissions in the delivery service industry. Both of these papers helped establish a larger context for the purpose of our project in the introduction draft. The first paper proposes the usage of drones for the delivery of AEDs, or defibrillators, to people in need and finds that autonomous drones would be able to deliver such emergent such emergencies medical supplies far quicker than traditional ambulance systems. 
This provided context into the potential usage of autonomous drones in the health services fields. Additionally, the second paper also gave the introduction evidence on how autonomous drones can also increase environmental efficiency in the shipping sector, as it finds that the usage of drones in low radius, low density areas generated far less CO2 emissions than delivery by truck. These contributions to the introduction draft ensured that the introduction of our research paper establishes the greater purpose and context of the drone videos team's goal of creating a competition and testing data set for person segmentation and reidentification on low power systems. The section I added to the introduction draft can be seen in the image to the right, excluding lines 32 and 33. I added the highlighted sections in the image to the right to the method draft of our research paper in order to explain our method of capturing the data set with participant consent and high resolution and in a variety of locations. This was to explain how our method would allow for the data to be used in, by larger companies without concern for ethics on participant consent and that the footage will be of high quality and varied in location. Additionally, I later wrote in the competition section of our method draft of our usage of IOU or intersection over union metrics to evaluate the regional accuracy of generated annotations with a figure to explain how it is mathematically calculated. This was to explain the decided upon evaluation metrics for our competition. This concludes my contributions this semester to the drone video project to research into related papers, solution design and development, and writing the research paper. And here are references to the papers discussed in this presentation.